Well, hello folks. I'm coming to you from across a partially consumed Sunday dinner here, uh, which Gemma prepared before she went to work. She's a good girl, isn't she? I obviously spent yesterday in Huddersfield. I spent a lot of time drinking beer and uh, very nearly didn't get a vlog out yesterday. Uh, and today's vlog has very little content because a, I was hung over all day and uh, now Gemma's at work so I can't go anywhere this evening, she's got the car. Abigail also had a birthday party. I'm making excuses up on her, I really am. So we're going to run through a little bit of a QA, and a just, uh, just a bit of filler basically, until we get back and resume normal service tomorrow. So you might be interested in listening to this, if not we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, but before we start I just want to say a big thanks to all the boys that I went to Huddersfield with yesterday. When we got there I was surprised to find out that they'd all decided that I wasn't buying a drink all day and we do a kitty everyone throws 20-30 quid in and somebody looks after that and you, you don't have to buy a drink all day if you know what I mean it just uh, the kitty keeps you going and I didn't have to pay into the kitty and uh, the lads looked after me all day and I felt really spoilt and it was for services to the Retford beer scene as they put it and I, I felt quite humbled about it so Thanks a lot, gents, for treating me. I feel like uh, now I'm in your debt. <laughs> so I think I'm going to crack on with the Q&A, guys. It's just going to be a brief one today. I'm not going to stand over this colander of cabbage much longer. It's really beginning to get right up my nostrils. And uh, we will probably see you on Monday for some exciting tank welding and all that kind of jazz. And we'll get back to the normal service. Enjoy the Q&A. Right, I guess to save your blushes and mine, we'll jump straight to the comment screen. And we'll scroll down and answer a few questions that people have posted in the comments over the past uh, 60 plus days. It's been a while since I've done a Q&A and considering the fact that I've not been able to get out anywhere really today to do anything, mainly because of the hangover I might be suffering right now, then uh, a Q&A is a simple and easy get out of jail free card that I can just throw straight into the vlog today, so that's what we're going to do. Right, so let's get down to some gritty questions then. Uh, first one we've got here, Sudacris Brewers, uh, great video, just one question, you are putting a jacket only on one side and only in the middle. What will that be? Will that be effective in controlling the temperature of the beer? Most of the tanks I've seen have the jacket wrapping around the whole tank. Well, a lot of the tanks do have a jacket wrapped all the way around, but that's not necessarily a cooling jacket. That could be just insulation. The cooling jacket could be underneath the insulation, giving you the illusion that it's wrapping all the way around. Um, it seems to work. I mean, uh, a lot of people. Uh, a lot of breweries just have uh, immersion plates. Uh, there's a comment underneath from uh, Le Gymster, and he's just put, uh, I realise you were meaning the chill plate or jacket. He said his old tanks were chilled the same way. I did. So it's probably not necessary to have them going all the way around. It's not. I saw another small brewery had a chill plate drop into the tank itself. So there's more than one way to do it. This is correct. And he's put, I'd probably just run some copper pipe around the outside if I was going to do something. It might be cheaper, this method though. Well, it's not cheaper uh, making a stainless plate to go onto the back of the jacket, but it is a more, uh, it's definitely a more convenient method. It's a more efficient method. And I did try, I did try the copper pipe on the, first Idle Valley Brewery kit that we built, the small 300 litre one. Uh, copper pipe's not that cheap actually, uh, but if you consider the amount of time it's going to take you to weld it or get somebody to weld it on, it does work out cheaper. The problem with the copper pipe is the surface area that's in contact with the stainless steel is very low, so you don't get much uh, you don't get much efficiency in the heat transfer or the cool transfer and this is definitely a better way of doing it and obviously it's a permanent permanent fixture strapping the copper pipe to the tank is a pain in the arse 
and uh, we had a couple of the pipes burst as well so you can't really trust it um, and then also when you want to move your tank anywhere you know you have to cap them off and I made the mistake once of capping them off to give it a cleaning cycle when it had the copper pipe on there and then I ran a cleaning cycle of course the glycol was capped off when it was cold we ran the cleaning cycle about 60 70 degrees C and it blew all the fittings off the pipe because the glycol wanted to expand in the pipe had nowhere to go so a lesson learned quickly there whereas when you're cleaning the bigger tanks like what we've got there they're just going to be clean in situ you ain't going to be disconnecting them so you've got to be careful that way I don't like the idea of putting chill plates inside a fermenter for contamination reasons and cleaning them it can be done it's just for me uh, another hassle that I don't want to involve myself in right next question let's move swiftly on uh, Daz Wills asked a question here, do you remember how much dry yeast uh, you used to add to your 300 litre fermenters? I was thinking about using 125 grams for 250 litres of wort, does that sound right? Well I used uh, USL5 on most of my beer recipes, occasionally Nottingham Ale yeast and very occasionally BRY97 and they all have dosing rates on the back of the packet, I'd advise you to follow them. I did comment underneath with uh, a figure of 80 grams per hectolitre or per 100 litres of beer which uh, which is what they recommend on the USO5 packet and then Daz has come back with a reply saying okay because I'm getting a lot of rotten eggs in my brews right now at 4 or 5 days so it's either under pitch, too warm and maybe bacteria did you measure the liquid tamp, temp or tamp tank <laughs> or tank wall temp for your fermenters uh, cheers Harry for the reply well I used to measure the temperature on the tank wall uh, but the temperature probe was well insulated against that tank wall so it gave a pretty accurate reading to within a degree I would say of the internal temperature of the liquid I'd say if you've got rotten egg aromas you maybe need to look at your water profile a little bit uh, your sulfide, sulfate ratio might be, might, might be a little bit out sulfate to chloride ratio uh, if anything if you want to keep the same ratio just try somehow to reduce the content of the sulfites and chlorides equally then you shouldn't really affect the overall outcome of the beer too much it will of course affect it but it'll allow you to bring down that rotten egg smell which isn't quite natural I find I've got it more with Nottingham Ale yeast uh, and SO4 than I did USO5 so yeah take a look at your water profile in temperatures down to between 18 and 20 degrees C and uh, and see how that goes but uh, yeah uh, under pitching if you just stick to the recommended manufacturers recommendations should not go too far wrong uh, bears on a submarine has asked the question what flow rate have you been running the argon at and is it still c25 or hundred percent I never use c25 uh, at all it was always straight argon for the for the TIG welder I've got uh, five percent argon CO2 mix for the MIG uh, but I've not actually used that yet it's sat there waiting to go on I've still got a cylinder of CO2 to use up before I dive into that um, and the flow rate is at 7 litres per minute thereabouts I'm using a number 8 torch on the a number 8 cup on the torch it's uh, it's only a, a WLP or WPL whatever it is 9 torch it's a small torch on the uh, on the TIG welder and then for the back in, I've been using about three liters per minute. Um, I find that it's working. It's working fine. I'm not having any spattering. I'm not having any uh, discoloration on the welds on the front. So I was pumping quite a bit more, maybe 14 liters per minute through initially and really getting through the gas. And I've just begun to dial it in. And that seems to be the sweet spot. I might be able to drop it to six or up it to 10, depending on the application depending on the size of the cup on the TIG torch but you know I'm still learning I don't know uh, there, there may be some science behind it I'm just playing it by ear to be honest uh, Cliff Briggs says there's no need for the backing bar when welding the strips to the outside it's it's solid so therefore no backing required 
Um, the argon from your gun will cover the weld. Well, it didn't because it burns straight through. It's only 1.6 mil stainless. The back sugars uh, massively because it's melting it. Uh, and then he's replied again saying, so how would you take 0.5? Your amps are far too high. You shouldn't be blowing through on 1.5. I'm not blowing through, sir. It's uh, full penetration. It's melting. It's coking on the outside. I've spoke to several welders. I don't know if you weld yourself, but uh, if you do, then you know something that we all don't, my friend, because there's no way you're going to avoid sugaring on the back end of stainless steel. Even if I'm running it at uh, 30 amps, you know, it's going to burn through that 1.6 mil stainless. It will be, it will be uh, giving me full penetration because I want full fusion on the weld. You see, there's no point in not cooking through. Uh, it's just like welding pipes. Uh, it's it's required. You have to purge on the inside. You get sugar in. It's hygienic fittings. That's the way it is. I've tried both ways, and I've seen it done by professionals. One of which I'm not, and uh, they all recommend and actively use backing bars and shielding gas as well, because the argon from the gun ain't gonna get inside the pipe. Frankly, is it? Uh, we've got Booper 009. He says Harry I was looking at some old videos on your channel of the IVB time the one or two or even three times you brewed the coconut shy PA with Tom I noticed that the bag of grain you opened was pre crushed do you crush your own grain and or do you buy it pre crushed well pre crushed I'm wondering because I do mill my own but might find it better to just buy pre crushed I used to buy pre-crushed, I was getting through tons in a month, so it made sense to buy pre-crushed, the turnover was high enough. Some of the specialty malts might hang on a little bit, but the manufacturers actually put a year best before date on the crushed malts from Brewers Select, uh, and if you make sure that they're packaged and sealed back up to the same conditions that they were originally, I have no reason to believe that that best before date should be reduced at all. So uh, it just, it's all part of the fun, milling your own grain, I guess. So if you want to mill your own, mill your own. I bought myself a mill and uh, I fully intend to be milling a lot more in the future. Particularly, like I say, the specialty malts. Maybe, maybe not the base malts as much. <laughs> We've got Steve's repairs. As usual, great vlog, but could you not play the stupid music? Or put some real music on. I don't know where you get these so-called tunes from, where people breathe helium first and make stupid noises and keep repeating them over and again. But it's very annoying. Sorry, mate. But how old are you? Oh, that's a bit of an insult. Uh, sorry again, but it's children's music and not cool, Steve. Uh, I did reply saying, "Don't watch them, pal." And he's put, "Okay, mate. Fair enough." We'll have to beg to differ on the music stuff. Keep up the good work. I said great vlogs. Should have mentioned the comment about the tunes were meant to be less than serious intent. All the very best. I'll continue watching. Well, Steve, you do what you want, mate. You continue watching. But I think you'll find that you're in the minority with the music and uh, nobody's on the helium. You know, they're all on much more tropical and exotic gases than that, I think. Yeah, but cheers mate right let's uh, let's look further down the list JC Insaniac dumb question no such thing why do you need to back up the welds before you weld it I was watching a video on a milk tank construction and they weld both sides simultaneously expensive CNC setup well there you go they've got a uh, argon gas on both sides of the weld and then it says, but they don't put a backup metal strip on before they weld anything. And they use a dimple making machine with a laser to weld the dimples and to make a super wide glycol blanket. Oh, and can you add a currency converter on your merch site? It might help you get more international sales. It's not my merch site. It belongs to clothes to order. I am merely a user on there. And yeah, the backing bar, I've covered that already, but... I think you answered your own question there. That expensive CNC setup. Well, there you go. And if they're welded both sides simultaneously, then without a doubt, there's argon on both sides. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, Luke Edward Reed asked a question on kegging with commercial kegs video, which is really quite old now. Uh, do you not have to rinse the keg with water after the sanitizer? No, you can use a no rinse sanitizer such as Star San or Peracetic Acid. 
Uh, and then he asks, is AWP no rinse? Like the video though, very informative. I don't know what AWP is, so I can't comment on that, but basically if it's a caustic agent, then no, it's not no rinse. Basically it's the acid, acid uh, sanitizers that are pretty much safe. But read the manufacturer's instructions. Uh, weekend Brewer says, have you got any ideas to soften the tops of the legs? I'm, I think he means the legs on the tank, on the, uh, on the fermenter we're building at the minute. Maybe 45 degree the tops. Uh, I'm going to keep them at a sharp angle but cap them. I'll put a plate on top. Two reasons. Uh, one of them is it gives me something to anchor against to prevent any, any uh, cladding sliding down the tank. And secondly, on the bigger tanks, it's somewhere for me to put my foot when I'm stood on the side leaning over at the minute. But yeah, I will I will be looking at dressing them. You're not going to see them from the outside when the tanks are completely finished. Jamie Lindley asks, would you not have the valve attached direct to the tank, then an elbow? And he's talking about the bottom of the fermenter. Yeah, you can do. I, I did in the past. It's constantly crawling on the tanks to turn them on and off. It's got to come through the elbow anyway. And actually, having the butterfly section smack bang there... Uh, used to restrict the flow particularly when there was a lot of trub and hop particles in the bottom so yeah I mean I've tried it I'm gonna try it the other way if it doesn't work I can always revert back and stick the valve on the bottom of the tank not a problem but this time round I'm learning from my mistakes and it's going on the outside of the tank so I can easily operate the valve without climbing under the tank bears on a submarine second question from him are you going to start cranking out volume of the existing range or get a bit experimental with this comparatively smaller kit I'm going to be brewing a lot more experimental beers with this kit although we are still going to use the old recipes they belong to me might uh, zhuzh up the names a little bit redesign the labels just to try and move away from the old IVB thing really draw a line under that uh, under that whole affair but uh, I'm going to play it by ear, man. I mean, whatever I fancy brewing, I'm going to hopefully have the uh, the autonomy to just get in there and brew it. Will's Brewery, love the music and intros to these vlogs. <clears throat> Say nothing. Bob Polly 2002 asks, Chris, I was wondering how you are going to handle the upper lip if you are going to use stainless rod to make a lip for rigidity or bend the edge over. Really enjoying your blogs. First time I commented, keep up the good work, you're on the right track with the work-life balancer. Yeah, a uh, few of the more recent vlogs, you've probably seen it by now. We rolled some rings and welded them to the top of the tanks, and they've really firmed things up, you know, in climbing and out of them tanks when they stood up, I imagine, and uh, there'd be no flex in them whatsoever. So we just used 5mm by 10mm stainless steel flat bar, rolled it in the, uh, in the sheet metal rollers, wrestled it on to the tanks and uh, tacked and fully welded it up on, on the top outside edge or the top inside edge actually and it's really done the trick right I think that's going to wrap it up for today guys that's uh, that's enough Q&A until we do another one I think I might do the next one using the concept of Twitter uh, and I'll put it out there on Twitter and if everyone can tweet me their questions It'll be easier for me just to scroll down the Twitter page. So, I'll leave a link at the end of the video. And if you click it, follow it, follow me on Twitter. Cheers.